This is going to be another Astro One um, how-to video, I suppose. Um, today we're putting in the heater, and the aim is to put it under the driver's seat here, with the vent pumping air out into the into the main living space here, and we're going to mount the fuel tank against the wall under the window over there, trying to leave enough space for the fridge that's going to be on this side. Um, I'm at your dad's house. And Dad's working on getting the seat out at the moment so we can make sure there's enough space under there. We're pretty sure there is. I've seen a couple of people mount them under the seats before. Um, thanks massively to the v the people in the Vivaro Traffic Campervan group and the self-built campervan group on Facebook who have been giving me some advice on how to do this. Um, but yeah, let's get cracking. Okay, so that's the seat out. We've left the frame in the bottom here, which we've had to do to make sure we get the heater in exactly the right place to fit underneath. It's worth mentioning as well that we've cut the carpet out, well not carpet, but there's a rubber floor here, and you can see by the battery well there how thick it is. So we've cut that out completely from under the seat so that we can mount the heater right down on the floor of the vehicle. On we go. What we've got to do, folks, is we've got to cut out a little bit of this subframe to be able to fit the fit the heater in. So here's the heater, and we've got to make sure that this underpiece and under here clears these bars here. So what we're going to do, and we're pretty confident this won't affect the um, the strength and structure of it, is we're going to cut out. We're going to cut from here to here and take that bar away, and we're going to do the same at the front here and here and take that piece away and then the heater can sit nicely right down on the floor and we've got lots of clearance all the way around now I've been told that when you fit it under the driver's seat you have to mount it not centrally but over to one side because there's chassis and, and bits and pieces under here that you've got to avoid so we're going to put it over towards the side here and uh, dad's going to get the old grinder going now to uh, to cut that bar out here he is with his uh, He's ready to go, say hello dad. Hello dad. And people wonder where Elliot gets it from. Right, we'll just cut the back piece out and then I'll bring you back. No small pieces. No, no there's nothing there. All right, so we've taken those off right, nice and close to the corners, front and back. And now we're going to see if we can fit this down in the gap. Before anyone says anything, yes, we know that's upside down. We just want to make sure it fits under these front and rear bars on the chair frame. And there it is. We need to have a bit more of a rubber on it. Okay, folks, welcome to the underside of Astro One. And here's the well where the uh, underneath the driver's seat. Um, this is the the door is that way through here and so here's the four holes that we've drilled for the for the plate one two three four and our main exhaust and air intake are going to be through the middle of this piece here and uh, and then we've got all kinds of space under here to mount any fixings that where we need to mount the uh, pipes 
and all that, and the fuel pump and all that sort of thing. So, happy days. Yeah. Okay, so coming along nicely now. Um, we think we can see our way to the finish. There's a bit of one or two bits of discovery going on as we uh, as we got through these early stages, but now we think we can see our way to the end. Um, here we go, we're marked up. Four holes are in for the corners of the plate, there and there. This is where our two holes are gonna go for the air intake and the exhaust. Um, what we're gonna do, the holes are gonna be larger than this. Some people do one huge hole for both of them to go through. What we're gonna do is two O larger overlapping holes so when we're done you'll see a sort of figure eight kind of shape here cut through and that should be enough for our, um, our air intake and exhaust and the, the four bolts that hold the heater onto the mounting plate um, and I'll bring you back as we've uh, well, once we've got all the holes cut So we've got a big hole. We use the grinder to take these corners off here. And now we've got two lovely, two lovely side-by-side -side holes. And the plate's gonna mount right over the top like that. So the reason the holes we've just drilled are so much bigger than these holes here is because they've got to accommodate where the bolts go through uh, on the underside of the heater. The, the bolts, the two bolts on either side of those holes, um, they're not, they're not, uh, they not to mount the heater to the chassis, they're to mount the heater to the plate. So there has to be clearance for them in the holes that we've drilled here, which I'll try to show you uh, a bit later on as we start mounting things uh, on the floor. But uh, that's it, I'll bring you back in a minute. Okay, so one or two of you might have spotted this. We've been putting the heater in upside down, obviously, to fit it underneath these bars of the seat frame. Uh, but we've had to put it in at an angle and then turn it. So we're not gonna be able to do that. We're not gonna be able to get the heater in place now that we've got the extra clearance of the, of the pipes without taking this, uh, the subframe out from the chair. So that's what we're gonna do next. Mm. So subframe for the chair is out. Those bolts were tight as tight as hell. But uh, yeah, we'll give this all a good wipe now, get it nice and clean, so that everything seals nicely onto the floor. And then we're gonna start getting something mounted, I think. Right. Okay, so, fuel pipe. Fuel pipe. What's That's this? The, um, the air induction pipe. Air intake pipe. And then this is the exhaust pipe just going on here. And we're fitting these before we push it through the floor, just to make life easier, to be quite honest with you. There's loads of space under there once, uh, once we push it through. So uh, it just makes life a bit easier to mount these before we put them on. And then uh, we use some clips once we get underneath. We use some clips to mount them onto the bulkheads and bits and pieces under there. Right. Okay. And then I think the idea is we're going to bring the fuel pipe up through the floor in this corner and into the fuel tank that's going to be against this sidewall. Um, fuel pipe going in. So let's get this, uh, go on then, fuel pipe down through. Easy. I was going to say we've got, we've got, we've got an exhaust, a bit of exhaust there as well. That's it. Clear. Lovely. Lined up with the holes top job okay folks so what we've got to do now we've got to seal that plate to the floor so under that gap there we're gonna put loads and loads of sealant to make sure no gases moisture anything like that can come up under the plate and then all the work then is underneath or a lot of the work next is underneath let's go 
go. So we're just tidying up the sealant around the edge here. This is uh, this is temperature resistant, temperature proof, heat proof uh, adhesive and filler here going in because obviously the exhaust is going to get quite hot um, while it's running. So you don't want to put your normal glue or uh, just silicon sealant or anything like that. It's got to be temperature resistant. So uh, that's what Dad's just tidying up here now. It's well sealed. You can see the sealant all the way around everywhere. So it's definitely check well sealed. Just about see through the gap there. That little lead there, by the way, we've just made sure that's clear. That we think is from the handbrake. We think that's just the uh, the little cable that tells the tells the ECU that the handbrake is on, so that you get the uh, the light on the dashboard to let you know that the handbrake's on. But um, yeah, we've made sure that's well clear of everything that's going on underneath. All right. So next stage is put the seat. we'll put the seat. Yeah, we'll put the seat frame back on. Make sure everything's in place, and then tighten the bolts underneath. Okay, so we've put the chair frame back in, the seat frame, and we've hit a, hit a stumbling block. People who have done this before may well have seen this coming. But uh, yeah, feel free to, uh, to let me know if you've done this, if you've mounted it under the seat and come up with the same situation. Because of the clearance needed underneath the heater for the pipes and the ceiling gasket, the position of the heater is actually a little bit higher up than it was when we were checking it before, which means the seat is not, the, the frame is not reaching the floor. There. So, what we think we're gonna do, these are not structural. They're just for clipping wires and, and bits and pieces on. So we're actually gonna take the grinder and we're gonna cut this away. And we're gonna cut it away over that side. Um, and yeah, which we're gonna take the frame out to do. And then with a bit of luck, everything will sit down nicely and we will be good to go. Now obviously I should say that if you're doing stuff like this, gloves, eye protection, ear defenders really should be the norm. Um, sorry, we're not setting a very good example as far as health and safety is concerned, but um, yeah, I must advocate eye protection, gloves and ear defenders because it's bloody noisy. Um, do as we say, not as we do. Okay, so everything's mounted inside. Everything's had a good old clean. It's been given the wonder wipe treatment, including the seat base, which is over there. Next thing is cable routing. So for those of you who don't know how the Vivaro is laid out, the battery is in the floor in front of the passenger seat over there. So we've got to get cables from here and we've got to get three cables out of this area. One of them has got to go into there and two of them have got to go back there. One for the fuel tank uh, pump, one for the fuel pump and one for the control unit, which is going to be mounted behind the rear, behind the side window there. So the plan is all three cables are gonna go out through a hole under here. It may need to go a bit further back because there's a bit of bulkhead underneath here that we wanna avoid, but we've got a 30 mil grommet that all of the uh, necessary plugs will fit through. And then once we're underneath, there's big holes and ducts that we can use to get to the battery bay. And then we're gonna drill through to this bulkhead here. Um, and because of the checker plate fittings that I've got, which basically squares off this, there's going to be a lovely big cavity under here that we can hide any extra cable. And then the one for the uh, fuel pump is going to remain underneath there. And the one for the control panel is going to come along this edge, nicely tucked in alongside the floor, and then come up the wall to where it needs to be back there. And if that is all ends up being as easy as I've just made it sound, It'll be a flipping miracle. Okay, so we've done quite a bit since I last spoke to you, uh, but my battery went dead, so I had to wait for some spares to arrive. Um, so, cable. There's the main plug from the heater, and there's the one that's gonna take all of the, that, that brings all of the other cables to where they need to be. Two of those go down through that nice big uh, grommet in the floor there that I told you about, and I've sealed all around them nicely. Um, and then the other two 
one of them here. This one goes to the uh, controller back in the in the van, and then this one is uh, the this one's the ground grounding connector, which we're just going to put onto one of the seat bolts like that. And then we've managed to get the fuel pipe. I'll show you the route in a minute, but the fuel pipe obviously comes out the bottom of there and it's in coming into the cabin here and it's going to run along there nicely up to where the fuel tank's going to be. And as if by magic, I'm going to get underneath the van now. Okay, so I hope this is focusing properly. There's the underside of the pump. Here's the fuel pipe. Fuel pipe comes down into the fuel pump which is this fella here. Um, the fuel pump has to be turned at an angle so that the exiting pipe is above the main body of the pump and the incoming pipe is below the body. That's just to save any um, air bubbles from forming anywhere. So we've got a nice vertical run. We've got a nice run all the way up here, all the way up and into the uh, into the heater itself. Here's the exhaust pipe, that's nice and easy. That just comes down and as long as it's behind the um, behind the heater itself so that the air isn't blowing the exhaust gases back in through there. You can mount it pretty much anywhere on the chassis. We've got an, used an L bracket to mount the silencer next to the main exhaust pipe of the van. And then we've got the air intake pipe, which is the black one here. And that, that comes from in front of the heater to make sure that there's no exhaust gases being sucked in. Um, here so and then there's an air filter on that end there which is what that tube there is um, so uh, fuel pump and then the pipe that goes up into the uh, the van inside the van is clipped along here uh, I hope you can see that clipped along here and then goes up through a hole up there into the van uh, wiring here's the the one cable that came through the floor that's just the power for the pump and here's the main power for the entire system and then that goes through here and then into the battery bay which is through that hole you can see there and that's pretty much it underneath the van there's the underside of that grommet where the cables come through um, all sealed um, as much as we can possibly get around there so there are no air gaps between the van floor and the pump the mounting plate for the pump at all um, and we're pretty much ready to get cracking on mounting the fuel tank now, I think. And then thinking about getting the driver's seat put back in. So we're going to do that next. Okay, so Dad's just getting the live end connected up to the battery here. Um, you can see the new cable coming off the battery over the far side there. This is a little fuse um, carrier. So the this particular um, Chinese diesel heater came with an inline fuse carrier um, for the main supply which is grand just protecting the cable from uh, from overcurrent um, we've got the fuse out of there at the moment because obviously we've connected the live end to the battery and we don't want to get zapped as we're doing anything at this end so the fuse is out and we're just going to get on with uh, installing the uh, fuel tank and all the other cables where they need to go and then we're not going to be far away from testing. So see you shortly. Okay guys, here's the uh, the subframe for the chair back in. Dad's just tightening up the last bolt that holds it down there. Um, there's the grounding point for the, uh, for the heater. We've just put a self-tapping screw straight through the floor there, metal floor that's connected to the chassis, so that's all good. The rest of the cables are all neatly bundled up there. And... It's looking grand. You can see where the where the airflow is going to come out. Now, at the moment, I'm undecided as to whether I'm just going to have a single airflow coming out of there, or whether I'm going to tee it off. And when I've got my when I've got my checker plate um, uh, divider in here, I might be able to take it down into that and bring it out in all sorts of places. There's the T piece there. So we've got we've got all sorts of choices uh, about what we do with the with the warm air as it exits the heater, but. Uh, yeah, we could we could even pipe it round behind the cupboards and, and bring it out further down uh, once all the seating is in. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll make a decision um, when we've got the uh, when we've got the cabinets and units to go in. Um, but for now, we're just going to get the chair mounted and uh, control panel. yeah, and then and then put the control panel and the fuel tank in. Here we go. Ah. 
Okay, here we are. So we've reached the point where we're ready to power up and test. We've got some uh, some diesel in there. It's above the hole, so there's enough there to, to get us all bled and sorted. Uh, the black cable there, that's just a temporary arrangement at the moment. I've just taken it back through to the cab, which is where the controller for it is. So, uh, fuse back in yet, Dad, or what? Okay. So the fuse just goes in that little carrier there that you can see that's open. And yeah, we're gonna we're gonna power up and, and see what happens. Apparently there's a there's a bleed function on the on the controller, Dad, did you find out, is there? There's a bleed function, Okay, cool. Right, back to you in a minute. Okay folks, so here's our control panel. And what the instructions say we have to do is hold the up and down buttons um, to prime the system. So I'm gonna push both of those. And the little pump icon has come on down by my thumb here. And you can hear the pump firing up. So I'm gonna hold on to those until the fuel reaches the heater. Okay, fuel's reached the heater now. So I've released those buttons and the little pump icon has disappeared. So the next thing is to fire up the pump. Okay, so the heater's now going through its startup sequence. And we've got air flowing out of here. It's just starting to get very slightly warm. We're about 20 seconds in, and there's a there's a, a bit of a new car smell coming out of it. Yeah. And it is it is warming up more now. It's warming up now quite quickly. So there we go. The three indicates that we're only on sort of half of the half of the power at the moment. Um, the six gears on this thing, what they call gears in the instructions. Um, so we are just waiting now for it to work its way through. But uh, yeah, there's definitely some nice heat coming out of there now. It's noisier than I expected, I have to say, but I imagine that'll hopefully quiet down a bit as it wears in. I'll bring you back in just a few moments, folks. Okay, folks, so we are pretty much done with this now. Um, it is set. I've got it set at the moment to, to heat to 20 degrees. Uh, current air temperature is 14. You can see that the pump, the heater is working there. Um, and you can hear it working. It's under, under the seat here. You can hear it working away. This is our air intake. And there's nice hot air coming out the other side there. Um, the remote is also paired. This one came with a, a nice remote control. Um, so that I can set it, I can get up in the morning and set it before I even come out of the house. That's all good. What I haven't figured out yet is how to get it to come on. Um, there's two settings. There's a manual setting where you just manually turn the power up and down. And there's a thermostat setting where it's set to 20 degrees, which I've got it on at the moment. But for some reason when I turn it on with the remote control, it only turns on on the manual setting. So if anyone knows what I need to do, to make sure that it's startup mode is the thermostat mode then please just pop it in the comments below i'd be ever so grateful to anyone that knows that i'm obviously going to do a bit of research and, and google the hell out of that see if i can find out but um yeah a couple of things to mention one or two people have talked about the pumps on these things being really noisy and to be honest with you there's a bit of a tick 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 but we've mounted the pump underneath the van so I can't hear it from inside at all. Uh, the second thing that clued up people will have met, will have uh, spotted uh, that I haven't mentioned yet is that of course there is a fuel filter. There's a filter that has to go in line before the pump. Um, and that is, we've put that because it's gonna be housed behind the units. We've put it right there next to the fuel tank. Okay, so that's there, that's working nicely. Everything's where it needs to be. Um, the heater is producing lovely hot air uh, and I'm, I'm pretty chuffed. So it just remains for me to find out how to make sure the startup mode is thermostat mode. Um, and that'll be it. I'll be pretty, pretty flipping happy with it. Um, it's gone in relatively easily and very, very minor modifications needed to the frame of the seat. Um, and that's it. Happy days. The final job that we're going to do before I disappear off from Dad's house now is you might remember that when I first got hold of Astro One, the plastic trim pieces down here were all black plastic, like the rear 
pillars are here at the moment. Dad has actually sprayed these white, aren't you, Dad? Yep. Yeah. And we're just clipping them back on. He's done it in two batches. So these ones that are on here now, they've gotten a bit dirty over the last few days of use. But here's one that Dad sprayed. Now this is a rattle can spray job. All right, with with a separate uh, coat of lacquer over the top. Proper primer, white paint of the correct colour for the van and a coat of clear lacquer as well and they look absolutely bloody fantastic. So here goes dad, he's popping this, popping this new one of these on. I should just push and clip on. There you go. new clips that are sort of mass produced somewhere so they might not be the greatest things in the world straight out of the bag but uh, I'll bring you back when we put all these on and we'll have a proper look around how Astro One's looking now okay so here we are folks um, you can see these lovely white panels white trim pieces that have been sprayed up she's a bit dirty at the minute because I've been sort of obliged to use her for work purposes for the for this month um, which is why there haven't been hasn't been much progress to be honest with you um, but there you go look fantastic looks the absolute business and uh, she is booked in to have these rear upright pieces painted as well so all of this around the lights is going to be white too um, and so is the bumper so um, well, what's next? Let's have a think. Next is uh, interior. So we're going to be finalising the uh, position of all the electrics and then we're going to be getting some carpet and floor down in here uh, because at the moment we still haven't got, uh, got lights in, we still haven't got the main uh, feed for the leisure battery through to the main battery. Um, we did think about doing that today but we haven't really had time. Um, gosh, it's lovely and warm in here now. Uh, compared to how it usually is and compared to outside it's fab so thanks ever so much for watching everyone um if you've got any questions uh, or comments uh, about what you've seen us do today uh, any hints or tips for you know installing those diesel heaters we'd be ever so grateful um, especially if you know how to ensure that the uh, it comes on in its uh, thermostat state from the remote control um any tips pointers for anything we're about to get done then then that would be great as well and just any comments that you want to that you want to make or questions you want to ask at all about the process i'll do my very best to answer them i do try to get back to everyone that comments on the videos and i appreciate every single like every single sub um every single subscribe every single comment question that gets asked so yeah don't be shy uh, get on there leave me some questions on whatever you want um, folks if you've enjoyed what you've seen today um, leave us a like give us a thumbs up uh, a comment um, consider subscribing to the channel and dad and I will see you again on another installment of Wild Astro and uh, we'll see you soon thanks a lot everyone <laughs>